Ciao friends and welcome to Simple Italian Cooking. My name is Liz and I've got a great recipe for you today uh, that is an antipasto salad. And what exactly is an antipasto salad? Well, let's back up a little bit. I've actually never seen an antipasto salad in Italy uh, and there's probably a few reasons for that. Um, so let's first talk about what is antipasto? What does that actually mean? So antipasto is actually not a specific recipe. Antipasto literally means before the meal. So it's kind of like what we would consider an appetizer, not a side dish, but an appetizer. So that's traditionally in Italian culture, what an antipasto is. So what I'm doing is I'm taking what you would have in on an antipasto platter or a tray, and I'm kind of combining it all into a bowl. I'm keeping mine very simple, but like I said, there is no specific recipe. So like there would be like a lasagna. I mean, that's very obvious what that would look like every time for the most part, a traditional lasagna. So I think over the years, an antipasto salad uh, has really become very Americanized to where you can do some really creative things by just like adding all these ingredients with lettuce and having like a green salad lettuce with antipasto in it. But that's not the direction I'm going. Everything that I have here, and let me just put this so you can see. Everything that I have here is um, store-bought. So I did not roast anything myself. I didn't grow anything myself with this except for some herbs that are coming later. So you can easily get all this at the store. Okay, so I'm using a variety of olives. Uh, you can buy it in a mix, but it's just a Mediterranean olive mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. Um, I'm going to add in some artichoke hearts, um, and in this case, I'm going to keep the artichoke hearts full. Sometimes when I make um, a salad, uh, I like my cannellini bean salad or my chickpea salad, I like to chop them up, but this time I'm keeping them whole. Uh, and again, I just, I got the kind that's in water that's not marinated. Now, I like people love the artichokes marinated, or, you know, already marinated in the jar. I don't do, I just don't. I like to control my seasoning. But you know what? If you really like it, then go ahead and add it. You know, this recipe is very, very flexible. And so that's why I'm hesitant to just be like, oh, this is how you have to do it. Because if you don't like certain things, swap it out for something else. And remember, antipasto just means before the meal. And in Italian culture, that usually consists of olives and cheeses and, you know, maybe some breadsticks and some meats. So how you put all that together, that's up to you. What I'm giving you is a guideline and how I like to do it. So Hopefully that's helpful. I'm also using some um, pepperoncini. Uh, and I bought the sliced pepperoncini. Um, I like that because it saves me a lot of time. And But um, I think that if uh, I were doing this for a party, yeah, if I was doing it for a party, I would definitely do this. But if I wanted to do it for like a presentation purpose, I would have the holes. So like in my antipasto uh, platter, uh, which you really need to check out if you want to know how to make an antipasto platter. Check out my blog post on it because I go into great detail on how to actually structure it, what to put where, what to buy, where to buy it, all that stuff. So and we're just taking that and putting it into a mix. So I have that. Now um, I'm going to take some roasted red pepper and I will gladly... Um, buy the roasted red pepper at the store but you if you are really good at roasting your own peppers and they taste really tasty then i would recommend it you know there's nothing wrong with that me i like convenience and i like easy so we got our olives check we got some vegetables check um now let's do some cheese so for the cheese i'm going to add in some just uh, regular mozzarella balls again non-marinated you can do marinated if you like it the problem when everything is marinated that you're buying at the store, you're going to get like such a mix of herbs that it can become too much and too overpowering. My goal here is to keep it simple. When I was in Italy and, and my family is Italian, my husband's family is Italian, it's really about simplicity. Um, some parts of, re of, of Italy will get more complex, um, especially like the uh, northern regions of Italy. Uh, the type of cooking changes. Okay, so I have that, but you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to add some um, Parmesan cheese. Okay, 
So I'm just going to put this into some cubes. And honestly, when you're working with the hard cheese, a lot of times it just falls apart. Um, so you can do cubes. You can do sh um, shredded. Not shredded. Like, you know, like a peel, like a real thin peel. So these mozzarella balls are actually pretty big. I think I probably should have just cut them in half. And I don't want this to be a mozzarella salad. What do we have left? We have some meat. So I have two types here that I bought. And uh, I wouldn't always use these, but I do think that, hey, antipasto often includes some thinly sliced meats. And one of those is prosciutto. And prosciutto is really nice, but how do you do it? Normally it comes in a long, I'll actually show you, a nice long slice of meat. So how do you put that into a salad? Well, I'll show you how to use it on my platter, which is very different than how we're gonna use it in this salad. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> so good. It's so thin, it really just falls apart, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna do a single slice. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut them into kind of try and get some bite-sized pieces here. So let's make this a little easier, right? I'm just gonna cut it with a, our food scissors here. So now we got some meat in here, got some prosciutto, which is very traditional for antipasto. They do so many different things with prosciutto. And you can wrap melons, you can, you know, wrap cheeses, all this kind of stuff. So now we're gonna take some of this. And again, you don't have to do this, okay? Three different types of cheeses, I mean, three different types of meat. So what kind do I wanna use? I think I'll just do some of each. I love pepperoni, don't you? Okay, two different types of salami and some pepperoni. So I gotta wash my hands because now they're all oily, so, or uh, greasy. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about the dressing. So if you're totally digging this type of recipe, then, and you dig in this video, make sure to give a like and uh, help share this and subscribe and hit that notification button because that way when I come out with more recipes, you'll get automatically notified. So, um, but really do appreciate that. I'm trying to grow the channel and uh, share the Italian kitchen love. In regards to the dressing, we're keeping it simple. We don't need a lot. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm simply taking some garlic. I think I'll have just a medium, a nice medium here. And this is one of those times where I'm going to use um, a garlic press. So if you watch my videos or, you know, a lot, uh, you'll notice that I rarely ever use a garlic press. Um, I usually just dice my garlic uh, myself and just make sure it's really small. But in this case, because I'm doing it in the dressing, I really want to infuse that garlic with the uh, olive oil that we're going to be adding. So, and garlic is really healthy for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some extra virgin olive oil. I'm using organic extra virgin. You wanna use a really good quality brand. One or two teaspoons. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do some cracked black pepper. And remember the quantities, you know, I haven't been giving you exact quantities, but I mean, you kind of saw what I'm adding, a handful of this, a handful of that, a handful of this, and you put it together. And if you want to add more later, you add more later. Okay, so now here's, here's the herb of choice for me today. And I'm just doing a little bit of oregano. This is fresh oregano that I grow outside. So good. Um, it's actually Greek oregano. It's got more of a kick and it's spicy. Um, I like that and I want a little bit of that kick in here. Uh, you do not have to use oregano. You can use dried oregano. Um, you don't have to use fresh oregano, I should say. You can use dried oregano. You can also use fresh basil. I actually have some basil leaves um, still growing, so I could have used that. I could use a little bit of dried basil, um, but I'm just doing the oregano, and I'm just doing a little bit because I really just want a hint of it. I know it's there, but not overpower. So in terms of the vinegar, right? Olive oil and vinegar, it always goes together. Well, um, with this antipasto salad, I'm not using vinegar. You don't really have vinegar in your antipasto platter. So 
I'm not going to put it in the salad. Plus, because I'm using the pepperoncini, that gives a little bit of that vinegar flavor. So, okay, so I put this in a little mason jar here, cap, and this is what I do. I just mix it up and shake it really well so that garlic gets all through there. Yeah, and you can see it actually gets thick. So you can use this for yourself, for your family, parties it would be great for because you can actually just pack it up and take it somewhere. Uh, so yeah, so you can serve this before, um, before your meal. So does it have to be before pasta? No. Uh, it's just that normally uh, pasta is part of the dinner process for Italians. Um, but you can, if you're just having, say, some breaded chicken or some chicken cutlets, love chicken cutlets, uh, then, yeah, this would be great with it. I mean, even if you're doing a lasagna or a fancy dinner for, for Christmas or for Easter, uh, birthdays, or just a nice meal. Maybe it's a Sunday meal. Okay. So let's get this poured in, and then we're going to mix it up, okay? That looks so good, doesn't it? I am, like, so excited to have lunch today. I feel like I should have a glass of wine with it. So you can really see the um, olive oil dressing is attaching itself to the ingredients like the mozzarella balls, and a little bit of oregano. So I would say that this could sit in the fridge for about a day or two. I wouldn't really go too much longer than that because you do have the meats and the dairy. Um, but you could certainly, if you're making it for a salad for a party, then yeah, go ahead and make it the night before and it'll probably taste even better because the flavors will really absorb. This salad is good at room temperature. So you wanna take it out a little bit before you serve it. Okay, so I'm just gonna eat right out of the bowl here. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, mmm. This is like antipasto platter in your mouth. It's good. Uh, and I think I'll have some salami. It's a good addition too. So the question is, gosh, that is so good. Did I make the right choice by not adding in vinegar or adding in something else like lemon? And the answer is yes, because I like this simple. I like an antipasto platter, so I want to take that platter and I want to put it into a salad. Um, this is really, really good, and I really hope you try it. Let me know if you try this recipe and if you made any changes to it and uh, what you think of it. So I'd love to know. Well, I wanna thank you so much for watching and make sure to sign up for our newsletter because we send out recipes every week that are easy and delicious, all Italian. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Grazie, ciao.